let's start with a short theory background. Photochemistry, as you already know, is the study of light activated chemical processes. These light activated processes can have a wide range of applications such as photocatalysis, um, solar cells, different types of medical applications. When you study photochemistry, you are often interested in understanding these like act activated processes so they can be optimized to a specific application. In these types of studies, photoluminescence and transient absorption spectroscopies are essential tools. Let's see what happens in a typical photochemistry experiment. Let's imagine that we have a molecule AB and we irrigate it. A photochemical process will always start with the absorption of radiation and the excitation of our material of interest. But from this excited molecule, it can proceed through many different pathways. The photoexcited molecule AB can relax emitting radiation, or it can also relax through a non-emissive pathway such as quenching. It can ionize, it can dissociate, it can react with other species. So there are many different types of processes uh, that this excited molecule uh, can undergo. The radiative relaxation pathway can be studied typically by photoluminescence spectroscopy. All these other pathways can potentially be followed by transient absorption. So let's imagine that the material of interest is a molecular compound and see which processes you would typically study. Before excitation, the molecule is in its ground state and on absorption of light, it gets excited to the first excited state, S1. The sample can then relax back to its ground state, emitting fluorescence, which is the emission of photons in the range of nanoseconds, typically. Or it can move to the triplet state by intersystem crossing. From this triplet state, it can relax back to its ground state emitting uh, phosphorescence in longer timescales, typically microseconds. Both the triplet and the singlet states can also relax without emitting radiation. As I mentioned, you will study the radiative relaxation processes by photoluminescence spectroscopy. You would use a photoluminescence spectrometer where you have an excitation beam going through the sample. This is the sample. Then the emission is studied at the right angle to avoid interference from excitation. And the light is filtered out using a monochromator. You can have continuous excitation of the sample and then scan the monochromator to obtain an emission spectrum or you can excite the sample with a short pulse of light and study the decay of photoluminescence as a function of time to obtain the PL or photoluminescence lifetime of the sample. For non-radiative, uh, probing of, of the uh, relaxation, non-radiative relaxation of the excited states, you would use transient absorption. Uh, transient absorption is a little different. It uses two sources of light, a pump and a probe, to excite the sample. Let's look in detail at what happens in one of these pump and probe experiments. We start with a population of molecules, mostly in their ground state. And first, the sample is excited with the pump pulse, which is a high energy laser pulse. This pulse creates a high population of molecules in the excited state, S1. After some time, this excited population relaxes through intersystem crossing, which creates a triplet population. 
And as the system relaxes, we can probe it with a white light pulse. Uh, the white light pulse will give you the absorption of the sample, and you can see they change as a function of time. Let's look in detail at what absorption processes are taking place. Absorption in the singlet manifold takes place in very fast timescales, femtosecond. If there is absorption in the triplet manifold, it takes place in the range of nanoseconds to milliseconds. The transient absorption spectrum measures delta OD, which is the difference in absorption between the excited state and the ground state. Absorption from the excited state results in a positive component in the delta OD spectrum. There are also negative components like this one, which come from what we call the ground state bleach. This bleaching is as follows. The pump pulse has depleted the population of the ground state. So its absorbance has decreased and this results in a negative change in OD, OD being optical density. Just like in photoluminescence, we can look at delta OD as a function of time to get the relaxation kinetics of the sample. We now look at the delta OD calculation in detail. It's this very simple equation where I100 is the ground state absorption which you obtain by passing the probe only through the sample. Uh, well, I say absorption is actually the intensity going through the sample. IT is the intensity going through the sample in the excited state that you obtain when you pass both the pump and probe beams through the sample. So the delta OD spectrum is simply a subtraction of the probe only absorption from the pump and probe absorption. This means that you typically end up with some negative components uh, in the plot in the region where the ground state absorbs. <laughs> 